Hi folks, it's Cliff here, a tool maker from New Zealand. In this video I'm going to talk about CNC production versus manual machine production. I've got to make a bunch of little nuts so that I can do a assembly run of these ITTP probes. They, they hold the arbors onto the bodies. Um, and I'm thinking about, I was thinking, should I make them on my CNC with a semi-automatic style production using gang tooling, or should I just make them on a manual lathe via another very efficient method? So I'll be discussing the alternatives, showing you some video footage of both CNC production and manual production with some tips and tricks along the way and we might get into discussing why we choose one over the other. Um, I'll, I'll show this machine running with gang tooling making a, a big production run of parts that I've done previously and then I'll take you through making it on a manual lathe with the tips and tricks along the way uh, for making these parts efficiently on a manual lathe. When you think about it, semi-automatic production isn't always better. You know, if you're only making a few parts, you also have to consider the setup time. The time it takes takes maybe to program the CNC process, to set all the tools and get it running automatically, often is a lot longer than the time to set up a manual machine and get into production more quickly. So the actual time or cost to make a part is a mixture of the cycle time of the process, of the machining process, add to that the cost of the setup and programming, and then divide that by the number of parts. And there's a, a point where a manual machine is more efficient. Obviously varies from one shape type part to another. Um, in this case, I've decided that 30 or 40 parts is more efficient to make on a manual machine. Obviously you want to choose a machining process that suits the particular shape and size and geometry of your part. In this case I'm making a small not very critical disc shaped part and so I can project the stock out enough to make about 10 parts in a row, drill a hole through the middle which is the tapping drill with one single pilot drill that's thinned down in the middle web so that it cuts quickly and cleanly to size a couple of thou smaller than size to allow for the drill cutting a little bit bigger because it's a pilot drill.
and I can power tap down the length of that hole now by winding the tailstock to get it engaged and just letting the tap pull the tailstock along. I'll give it a bit of body weight to take the friction out of the pulling motion. So with the digital readout tool offset number set to the parting tool facing with zero on the end, I just have to advance it the length of the part plus the thickness of the parting tool, 6 millimeters, 12 millimeters, 18 millimeters, and I can rattle out a whole lot of parts now. I'm using a wire to catch the part, not always successfully, because it fires like a bullet across the workshop because it's held on by the thread remaining as the parting tool breaks through. And you can see by that process you can quite quickly rattle off 10 parts, project the stock out again, turn it down, drill and tap it, produce another 10 parts and so on. So you can see it doesn't take long to make a bunch of little parts like that. And I bet you're thinking, well, how are you going to face the other side and put the chamfers on it? You know, that's a pretty awkward little part to hold. And this is where these little miniature chucks come into play. Have you seen my recent video on these really low cost chucks out of China? Of course, with the tariffs situation fluctuating wildly at the moment, who knows where the price is going to be by the time this video is published. But anyway, you can pick these up currently really cheaply and you can machine the jaws to what you want. They are hardened and tempered, but they're tempered back to a hardness that can just be machined with tungsten carbide. So you can put in reverse jaws, you can machine little steps in them. Can you see down in there? Whoa! A little step there for holding the particular shape part you want and any part in future that's similar to that and then that same facing and chamfering tool I grind out of tungsten carbide out of old end mills have a look at my video on dressing and getting a diamond grinding wheel to cut through it makes such a big difference you can grind your tungsten carbide tooling and it will cut cleanly and last a very long time. I'll just show you machining those little parts on the back. Now. You might have seen my recent video on modifying these tiny little chucks and fitting an arbor which allows them to hold them in your ordinary three-jaw chuck. So they're just so quick and easy to use. You've got a little nest machine in the reverse jaws in this case that just suits the part you want to machine and you can tighten it up and face it off. Quick as that, you've machined the other side. The final stage is to machine the little screwdriver slots in the top. This is not an efficient way to do it, but because it's only a small quantity, setup time is an important part of the decision. 
So a vice and parallels and a stop is very quick for setup time. <laughs> are not an efficient way to do production but I'm only making a few and so the whole job's over with pretty quickly even though it isn't optimum. I mean sometimes you have to accept machining processes that are really borderline. This is really borderline. The cutter started to turn the little rings round when I did the first cut so I had to tighten it up a little more starting to squash the rings out of round. Um, and just it's just holding in place if I get the right tension on the vise um, and then the springs spring back out of round circular again after they're released but you know you know you're right on the edge of, of uh, it working when that sort of thing happens but you know if you can make it work and you can get through it in a you know half an hour then it's not worth messing around trying to come up with uh, a more sophisticated process Actually, that raises an interesting dilemma, doesn't it? There's two sides to an engineer's psyche. You know, there's the side that's sort of uh, the banker that wants to be efficient and get the job done as quickly and profitably as possible. And then there's the sort of perfectionist engineer that wants the optimum machining process just for the satisfaction of doing the job properly. Um, you know, and, and, and you... I think most of us are a mixture of those two elements and you sort of try and find a balance between them. It's quite intriguing really. There's the part of me that uh, wants uh, to have the perfect machining process is cringing <laughs> but the other part of me saying, no, come on, just get it done. It's only half an hour. What are your thoughts on this subject? I mean, do you think that engineering and machining should be a practical process of efficiency where we're striving to get the job done quickly and efficiently and profitably or if you are you more of a view that really it's a philosophical journey into perfectionism and we should be looking for ultimate solutions and trying to enjoy uh, advancing our understanding of what's going on behind the scenes you know, I've had comments in both directions over the years and some people say don't indulge your perfectionism as if perfectionism is some sort of a sin and other people saying oh you're cutting a few corners there you shouldn't you be doing it by this superior process. <laughs> it's quite a conflict and it intrigues me. One thing I will say is that if you can find a time to strive for more and more advanced solutions heading down the road to higher and higher levels of perfection you are understanding everything at a much deeper level that then allows you to do more and more difficult work and think more and more creatively um, and that ultimately builds your skill set more quickly than an approach of just trying to get it done quickly and get it out the door. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on this subject. I'm imagining a lot of you viewers are enthusiasts, hobbyists, who just love uh, the subject of uh, engineering and machining. Um, but there may be a percentage of folk who are also running businesses and are looking for tips and tricks but are you secretly also enthusiastic and hobbyists um, underneath that need to earn money? Uh, that's been my background. I've, I've, I've done engineering for decades, um, but really I've loved it. And it's been a way of uh, getting paid to do my hobby. Um, let me know your thoughts on that subject. And uh, if you found something useful there, Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Cheers.